Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. <laughs> and this for today's video I bring you the review of the new Adrenaline drivers as usual, or not as usual, but this time the 25.9.2 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 25 is the year 2025, 9 is the month September and 2 is the revision in that same month, so the second revision of September. And usually the latest drivers have been WHQL, with some of them being optional drivers like, let's say, um, I would say like the past two, three driver versions besides the 20, yeah, that's a car, the 25.9.1 have been WHQL signed, which means that the driver is signed or kind of certified by Microsoft. In this case scenario, this driver is optional, but it brings mostly some fixed issues and improvements, and of course some highlights with new product support and some game support, especially for Dying Light, the beast. And when I talk about the beast, the only beast that I can remember is today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. But well, let's start with the release notes. Firstly, we start with highlights with new product support for the AMD Radeon RX 7700. You are hearing it right, it is not the 7700 XT because that card already exists. It is just the 7700 non-XT, the first time in years since RDNA 3 was released, I believe. RDNA 3 was released in the end of 2022 and now in, 20, in almost the end of 2025, Three years later, we have a new RDNA 3 card and we have the, the 7700 non-XT. And by the way, this card is different from the XT because the XT has 52 computer units and has 12 gigabytes VRAM with a 192-bit buzz. While the 7700, well, it has less computer units, which are the computer units that the usual 700 series have 40 computer units, for example, the 5700 XT has 40 computer units, the 6700 XT has 40 computer units, and so on, so on, so on. And now the 7700 has also 40 computer units, but now has 256 bit buzz and 16 gigabytes VRAM. And I asked AMD if they could send me one of these cards, but they did say that this is basically for North America only and for system integrators, so... Yeah, it is what it is. As for the new game support, we only have one with Dying Light the Beast. And I can tell you already that, that if you are playing Dying Light the Beast, especially with the 9070 XT, you want these drivers because the performance is definitely, yeah, definitely and considerably better. And the same applies for the 7900 XTX. So yeah, just for you to know. As for fixed issues and improvements, we have Corruption may appear while playing games based on Godot Engine with Vulkan, which is a nice thing. The second fixed issue or improvement is Intermittent Application Crash may be observed while playing Chronos The New Dawn with Ray Tracing enabled on the RX, on the Radeon RX 9070 series graphics products. And I did play a bit of Chronos, but I didn't enable Ray Tracing, so I guess that's a non-issue for me at least. But if it was an issue for you, it is now fixed. And the last fixed issue is failure to launch may be observed while playing the Oasis driver with Windows Mixed Reality headsets, which is a really, really niche issue, I would say, but at least it is fixed. But as usual, not everything is cotton candy and unicorns, so we do have known issues. The first one being intermittent application crash may be observed while playing The Last of Us Part 2 on the Radeon RX 7900 series graphics products, which is still a bummer. The second one is intermittent application crash may be observed while playing NBA 2K25 in my career mode on the RX 9070 series graphics products. And according to AMD, they are actively working on a resolution to be released as soon as possible. Intermittent application crash may be observed while playing FBC Firebreak on some AMD Ryzen products such as the Ryzen AI 300 series and the Ryzen 8000 series. This is an issue that has been occurring for quite some time. I don't really know why. I don't really know why AMD didn't, didn't fix it yet. Maybe because the Ryzen AI series aren't really out there that much, especially the, the Max Plus. I don't, I don't know, know, but it has been happening for quite some months and it is annoying to see, to constantly see the same issues in the release notes. But, but yeah, I guess you guys don't really read the release notes at all, so 
whatever. Corruption, missing scan travel lines, may be observed while playing GTFO on Raiden RX 7000 series graphics products. Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while loading a save game in Cyberpunk 2077 with path tracing enabled, meaning that if you have a 9070 XT or maybe another AMD card, this issue still isn't fixed. Again, this has been happening as well for some months. AMD finally acknowledges the issue, especially when loading some save game or whatever, but it, is, it still isn't fixed. But I mean, it's path tracing only as really small people of, uh, a, a really small percentage of people will play Cyberpunk 2077 in path tracing or with path tracing with a 9070 XT. So yeah, but I mean, it, it should have been fixed by now. Stutter may be observed while playing games with some VR headsets at 80 or 90 Hz refresh rate on some AMD Raiden graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7000 series. And yeah, this is another bug that has been happening for months. I know this is an optional driver mostly for, um, not for Kronos, mostly for Dying Light the Beast, I know that, and for the RX 7700 non-XT. Still, I mean, these issues really need to be fixed. Really, AMD, come on, you can do better. And getting closer to the final line, we have intermittent system crash may be observed while playing World of Warcraft while watching YouTube on the Raiden RX 7900 GRE graphics products, which is again a very niche problem, but is happening. With the less known issue being, intermittent application crash may be observed while playing games with EA Javelin anti-cheat and Raiden anti-lag enabled on some AMD graphics products. Users experiencing this issue are recommended to disable Raiden anti-lag as a temporary workaround. Anyway, that's basically all for the release notes, but one thing that I did notice was that in the package contents, we do have something interesting with Ryzen AI NPU MCDM driver version. So basically a new, dri a new driver version for the Ryzen NPUs. Well, remember FSR4 int 8 version, so we have the FP8, which is the RX 9000 series version, and now it seems that AMD will kind of release, or already released, it was kind of leaked, but I still believe it was a controlled leak to see how people would react, of course, and I believe they will release the int 8 version, which is kind of FSR4 light. It doesn't really bring the same exact quality as, a, as the FP8 model, of course, and the performance impact is also higher because it isn't optimized yet. Again, it was a lick. But since it is using int 8 and the NPUs can use int 8, I believe it would be very, very nice if we could, if we could have, for example, in case you have a CPU with an NPU, which is a neural processing unit, you could actually run FSR4 algorithm on the NPU in order for you to not have any performance breakdown when using it. For example, when you're using FSR4, if you're using FSR4 to kind of upscale your image quality, let's say that you have 60 FPS. With FSR4, you go to 80 or 90, but if you didn't have to lose that power used to actually do the algorithm processing, Instead of going to 90, you would go, for example, in theory to let's say 110. Now, if you can just go and make the NPU do the algorithm and just go with all the performance you can uh, on the GPU, that would be nice. I don't know if I can, if I'm making myself clear because uh, again, English is not my main language and when I'm trying to talk uh, or trying to, to explain some things like specifically, it is sometimes hard for me to find the correct words. But yeah, I guess you understood what I meant. It would be very, very cool. And well, guys, as for the bads, the goods and the bads of these drivers, uh, I mean, differences are basically none. And they're basically none because these drivers are kind of optional and they're kind of minimal drivers. They're mostly for people that want to play Dying Light the Beast. If you want to play Dying Light the Beast, just use these drivers because the performance will be considerably better. Sometimes much higher than before, like with the 9070 XT. And by the way, Dying Light the Beast, at least from what I know, is the first game, the first really, where we have FSR4 integrated natively. As soon as you go into the game, you don't really need the drivers for anything. You don't need to change the LLs. As soon as you go into the game, FSR 4.0.2 is present. And since uh, we now have the, um, the new files from the Fidelity FX SDK 2.0, what happens is that inside the game you can select three versions of FSR, which is actually nice. So you have FSR 2.3.4, FSR 3.1.5 and FSR 4.0.2, which is, again, really interesting to see. 
With this all being said, I believe there's nothing more to talk about about these drivers. Of course, in the end of the video, we'll have the comparisons, the performance comparisons, this time with the 9070 XT and 7900 XTX, testing Kronos to see if the performance improved with these drivers as well, and testing Dying Light the Beast. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave your comment in the comment section. It is very important for you to leave the comments in the comment section because that means that you will be sharing your knowledge, you'll be sharing your experiences, and that for the community is kind of golden. People watch the comment section a lot to see if, if you have the same problems as they do or if you have the same experience as they do. And believe me, AMD, from time to time at least, they will also read the comment section. So that's a very good thing. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.